Hi everyone, I'm Cindy, pharmacist from Caring Pharmacy. How are you guys doing today? I hope everyone is still doing fine here. Today, we are going to have a live session all about ankle sprain, and we are really lucky to have Dr. Chua, who is a foot and ankle orthopedic surgeon based in Summer Medical Center with us today. So let's welcome Dr. Chua. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Dr. Chua. Good afternoon. Hi, Simi. Yeah, did you have a good day? Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you so for answering my video call. I see that you are actually wearing your surgical gown today. Have you just yeah. done an operation? Yeah, sure. I just finished one uh, fixation for ankle sprain patient who has a fracture. Yeah. yeah, did the operation went well? Yeah, okay. Everything is good. Oh, good to hear that. Um, actually, I'm calling you today. I hope you're not too busy because I'm calling you today because I really need your help. Yeah. As I've already got a list of questions here ready for you. So are you ready for this? Yeah, sure. I'll try my best. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to start too. But before we start the sessions, I do have a good news for our audience today. As we will be giving away to three winners, a hundred ringgit worth of the carrying cash voucher at the end of these sessions. So to everyone who is watching the live stream right now, you can start to answer to the questions pinned at the comment box down here. And you can, uh, the other questions would be, we should soak the spring anchor in warm water immediately after the injury. So is that true or false? So you can give your answer in the comments box here below together with the hashtag caring pharmacy, hashtag menavini. And we will then select and message to the winner with the most accurate answer at the end of these sessions. So don't forget to like our Caring Pharmacy Facebook page to share this live stream and tag three friends along to increase the chances to be our winners. So Dr. Chua, yes. as we all know that the COVID situation in Malaysia is um, getting more under control and we are also in the recurring MCO period right now, uh, so more and more people are actually going back to their normal life. So although I'm not on duty today, uh, but I do actually see uh, a lot of people recently started to go out to do like jogging or exercising. You know, when you are doing activity like this, if you are not careful enough, injury can just easily happen. I can see a few cases like, a, like for example, ankle sprain in my workplace. Is it the same for you as well? Yeah, I think uh, the ankle injury are increasing now. During the MCO, they are already less uh, ankle sprain to come to the clinic because I think uh, most of the time is, uh, you know, Tido, Dudo, Tido, Dudo, uh, eat, <laughs> sleep, eat, sleep, uh, never do exercise, no chance to do exercise. So the incident of the ankle sprain also less. And now with the RMCO, I think more people going out for jogging and uh, do some sport. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, the incident is uh, slowly coming back, yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, there's this one day, a middle-aged lady, I think she was around 40 to 50 years old. Yeah. She actually came in and see me and asked me like uh, what to actually apply for her ankle pain. But I'm not too sure whether she actually sprained her ankle or it was caused by any other reasons. Doctor, mm -hmm. um, how can I actually tell like if she actually sprained her ankle? Yeah, first of all, we need to uh, ask them any history lah how mm -hmm. they injured their, their ankle. The ankle, it can be uh, injured by injury, trauma, like uh, doing the sport activity, uh, more commonly in Malaysia is a badminton or yeah. a basketball mm -hmm. or even jogging or even uh, just normal walking. Uh, also, uh -huh. they cause this type of injury. So we need to, to ask uh, where actually the pain, uh, because for ankle, uh, actually, it's a complex structure, complex structure. You see, this anchor model, there is a bone there, and this is an anchor, right? Yeah. This is a bone, and then outside the bone, there are so many structures. Like this is the muscle, then the tendon, then the ligament, and then here also ligament. The red color one is a vessel. The uh -huh. yellow color one is the nerve. All this can be get injured uh, during a uh, ankle uh, sprain. So, uh, like this ankle, uh, let me. Uh, so this is a big toe, right? Like the inner side of ankle, there is uh, one important ligament called deltoid ligament, and uh, outside the ankle here, there are three important ligament: one in front, one in the center one at the back and these are the common ligament injury so when your patient come to you to ask the ankle pain then you need to ask where exactly the pain 
and then whether they got the injury or not and how they injured you know, commonly is uh, they are injured this way yeah this way yeah oh, sometimes they get injured that way yeah mm -hmm. but commonly is uh, 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 this way uh, this way uh, this way yeah so by stretching the ankle this way then most commonly the ligament is either stretched out or torn totally commonly is a front ligament and the center ligament yeah front so, and the center mm, side the center so they may uh, come to you because of the severe pain yeah or they just say that oh you got the swelling and then you just uh, need to ask uh is there any history of injury you know? or yeah. even with high heel you know high heel lady oh, yeah. like very high heel right yeah luckily oh, i'm not oh, a high heel person mm. <laughs> and they, they were twisted like this it's a very common very yeah common. I, I don't i don't usually wear any high heels but um she actually also not sure like how severe it can be so she asked me whether she needs to go to the hospital or the clinic or not so how do you usually like uh, determine the severity of the ankle sprain is it yeah, is it based uh, on the degree of injury to the ligament or any other parts yeah mm. Usually, uh, after the ankle sprain, yes, the, the patient, the person that injured, they may mm -hmm. still uh, you know, uh, do it at home or put some ice pack or take some medicine. Uh. However, after one or two days, if it's not subside, then they need to seek medical advice. Or if they have a pain over mm -hmm. this part, uh, this part, uh, this outside mm -hmm. the ankle, over the inside of the ankle here and over the foot over the outside of the foot here or even they cannot step on the floor for at least four steps eh? yeah. after they walk four steps they cannot even walk four steps then this is called Ottawa ankle rules eh? they need to go to the clinic or the hospital to at least do an x-ray to see is there any fracture or not it's yeah. very important yeah Mm. That, that, that's why there's another young man who actually asked me if he can actually walk on a spring ankle so let's say if he couldn't walk does that mean that he has a risk of like bone fracture mm. uh, usually if it's just a ligament tear the patient is still can walk about it lah, huh? however it's a pain and a very uh, swollen if he cannot even step for four step huh, on the floor uh, mm -hmm. they can they have to stop their activity like when they are playing uh, basketball or uh, badminton or even running then this one is a must to go to the hospital or the a nearest clinic to, to, mm, to do the yeah. x-ray at least exclude any any fractures here. yeah doctor another question that i want to ask i think the audience are interested to know mm. as well uh, which ligament exactly is responsible for the ankle sprain mm. yeah we have a uh, uh, outside here uh, that's how i explain it is a uh, three ligament one from the front, one from one the middle, middle, and then one at the back. back. Mm -hmm. Commonly injured one is the one that in the front and the center one. Yeah. And then some occasionally, these are inside of the ankle. Yeah, mm -hmm. called delta ligament. Sometimes the patient may be presented with a torn of the ligament if they sprain their ankle this way. Yeah. Right. Commonly it's, uh, it's uh, this way. So it's actually more difficult for them to twist the ankle in the other angle. Yeah, not difficult, but uh, yeah, commonly is 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 a we call it inversion, inversion. Inversion, right? Is, yeah. And doctor, for because I'm not a high heel person, but for mm. someone who actually wear high heels, um, how do they actually prevent ankle sprain then? Don't wear high heel. <laughs> <laughs> any any all oh, right. So just try to avoid wearing. Yeah. Like to yeah. avoid because this is a question actually from our audience, Nerfiza, mm -hmm. that she's really interested to know if she's going to wear high heels, how could she actually like avoid the ankle sprain? Mm. You need to walk carefully when walking, don't look around. Don't <laughs> look straight. <laughs> I mean, you need to take care like, if you want to wear high heels because when you wear high heels, they are already uh, a risk factor of uh, uh, falling and uh, ankle sprain. Yeah, because many ladies just like to wear high heels. Mm, mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, like uh, for someone who just had an ankle sprain, can uh, we can we can actually just ask them to apply some uh, ice pack. Yeah. 
Yes. Is that true? So in uh, acute injury, when mm -hmm. you have uh, uh, ankle sprain, you have uh, something on the side or at home, you can do something called a uh, rice therapy. R-I-C-E. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. asked you to eat a lot of rice or put the rice on the foot, eh? but it stand for, R stand for rest. Rest means rest your foot, don't mm -hmm. move too much. I mean with the ice pack, ice pack, eh? not warm water, but ice pack. And then C is compression. You can use some bandage to bandage it so that to decrease the swelling. And also the fourth one called E, called elevation. So you must uh, elevate your limb up even when you sit or when you sleep. You also have to elevate up then, uh, higher than the heart level. So that these are the measure called rice therapy. It's the initial uh, treatment that you can give to anyone that has a sprained ankle. Right, so you have any customer who actually walk in like they just had an ankle sprain, you can just mm. suggest this to them. There's yeah. also another question from our audience here called uh, Osen Ern. So he asked that is it possible that uh, ankle sprain is caused due to uh, uric acid or gout? Is it possible? Yes, the ankle pain can caused by uh, high uric acid, uh, gouty arthritis. Uh, but more commonly, they will affect the uh, big toe and also a male patient. When a female patient comes to you with all mm -hmm. this joint pain, uh, gouty arthritis can be happen, but not common. Commonly, they attack a male patient. Yeah. It can be uh, because of gout also, yes. Yeah, so we would definitely need to seek, seek medical attentions and examine before we treat ourselves first. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, doctor, I'm not sure if you actually noticed that uh, there's a, actually a certain group of people who actually treat themselves using their own methods. Yeah, mm. um, I've seen a few in the past, but I'm sure you have, you, you have seen like more, much more than me. So for example, some people will actually soak the spring ankle in warm water immediately right after the injury. So yeah. do you think this is the right thing to do? Yeah, I think for the acute injury, soak in the warm water may not be appropriate eh, because it may cause more swelling. Because when you soak in the warm water, the vessel get dilated, dilated. Then it may cause the uh, ankle to be more swollen rather than to swing it. So in acute injury, usually we use the eye pack. Eye pack. Yeah, speaking about applying an ice pack, uh, the correct way of doing so, actually, we, mm -hmm. how long should we apply it for? Yeah, if you have a commercial one like this, you can use a commercial one and put the eyes uh, inside, right? Yeah. If you don't have a commercial one, you can use the ice cube that uh, take up from our fridge and then we can put ice cube into the plastic bag, seal it properly and then use a layer of the thin towel, thin towel, thin and towel. then apply onto the place that is swollen. Uh, not directly. Remember, not cannot put directly because the eyes you cannot uh you no know, uh, uh go to the skin and it may cause some problem to the skin if you apply directly the eyes back onto the skin. Therefore you need to use a layer of thin towel and then apply only five to ten minutes, uh, not continuous for one hour, right? Just five to ten minutes, there's good enough already. Yeah, so I remember now, so this is 5 to 10 minutes, you can do several times a day, correct? Yeah. Yes, you can do yeah. up to 3, 4 times or every 3 hours. Eh? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Bef uh, before I forget, I would like to highlight again to our audience first that we are doing a giveaway to 3 winners, 100 ringgit of the carrying cash voucher at the end of these sessions. So to everyone who is watching the live stream right now, you can start to answer to the question pinned at the comment box down here. And along with, your question, along with your answer, please remember to hashtag Caring Pharmacy, hashtag Manarini. And you can also like our Caring Pharmacy page and also share our this video. And tag three friends to increase your chances to be our winner. And Dr. Chua, yes. uh, there's also another question from um, the audience, Elaine. She says she is a marathon, marathon runner. So she can, she, because she's a, a sport player, so she can easily injure her ankle. So that uh, plantar fasciitis has any relation to the ankle injury? Yeah, plantar fasciitis normally uh, there is a different entirely uh, compared to the ankle uh, sprain, 
right? So plantar fasciitis is somewhere at the heel. Yeah, this is our sole. So you see this white color thing is called plantar fascia. So plantar fascia usually is pain at the heel here, especially early in the morning when you first step down the uh, bed, they will be very painful. Then after we walk for some time, the pain will slowly go away. Or when there's no activity for some time, when you watch movie, you know, or you sit down for too long, then mm -hmm. uh, when you start walking, there'll be a pain over here. So this actually is caused by, occasionally caused by injury, but this uh, normally happen in the uh, runner and autism because of their calf muscle. Our yeah. calf muscle is too tight because they never do stretching exercise of the calf muscle and then indirectly causing the pain over here. This is a plantar fasciitis. So to yeah. overcome this, you need to do stretching exercise. You no, know, how should we do? Relax the uh, the calf muscle. There's a board that you can do is uh, is standing the board like this, right? So that the calf muscle got stretched out. Yeah, you know, like this. There's a special inclination board that you can do to stretch the calf muscle, uh, like this. Especially also for ladies that wear high heel. Because mm. after their long term wear high heel, like this, their calf muscle will slowly contracted and then become very tight. Then when they walk, they got a pain over here. This is plantar fasciitis. Oh, so it means that for ladies who actually wear high heels, they are at risk for plantar fasciitis as well. Yes, yes. Right. Um, so it means that, okay. Um, Dr. Shah, just to double confirm with you, like for most mild cases, can we actually give the over-the-counter um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory painkiller to help them to manage the pain and the swelling? Is that exactly enough? Yeah, you can. And normally, if a patient come and see us, yeah, initially they'll be very swollen and painful. Yes, I will also give some non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication for seven to 10 days. By the time seven to 10 days, they should, the pain should subside. Uh, if it not subside, uh, please ask them to see any doctor that nearby their house. Yeah. Right. Uh, Dr. Chua, there's a question here from our audience, uh, Anna Tan. She asked that uh, she has a really bad uh, spring injury in the past. Mm. So how long is the estimated period uh, for the ankle sprain to heal? Like how, how long should we estimate the ankle sprain can be healed? And mm. what kind of exercise can she actually do to um, ensure a proper recovery, like she can gain back the stability? Mm. So when a patient come, we will make sure we need to do an x-ray first to, to see whether they have a fracture. So if there's no fracture, usually there's a ligament tear. For ligament tear, even though it's the clinically we've got a grade one or grade three, yeah, uh, for us, the treatment is the same. Normally, if it's a total torn also for the lateral side meaning the the ligament on the outside of the ankle we the will outside. not do acute repair we are still treat this non-operative and 90 percent of the patient of the ankle sprain with ligament tear will not need any surgery so usually we will ask the patient to have this type of brace uh, ankle brace uh, or ankle support uh, mm -hmm. for at least six weeks because any ligament tear will yeah. take six weeks to heal. And why we need an ankle support is we need to support the ankle in a good position. Uh, you can see here, in a good position. So uh, they will, they, the, the ligament tear will recover uh, by scarring. We want the ankle ligament to heal by scarring in a good position. If we don't use the ankle support, then they may heal in a long position. When a long position, what happens is the ankle will get instability. This is called ankle instability. We don't it want that to move. Yeah, it might actually move. Right. Especially when they are walking downstairs. So we want to walk with a stable ankle, stable ankle, not the ankle that is a 
not stable. Yeah. So uh, basically, he can still walk, but uh, we take six weeks to heal. And then after six weeks or sometime even earlier, four weeks, we need to train back their muscle by mm -hmm. uh, doing some ankle uh, physiotherapy to train back the ankle uh, muscle that's around the ankle. Yeah, you can see from this model, you got so many muscles around. Huh? You need to train back every one of them. And when you are not doing exercise for six weeks, your know, even calf muscle or the muscle of the leg, it got smaller and then may get the fatigue. Fatigue means uh, when they are not doing exercise, their mm -hmm. muscle strength is not good. And then when you just walk a bit, we get uh, uh, soreness of the muscle, we call fatigue. Yeah, this is how uh, the ankle pain should uh, yeah, build so up. Yeah, so uh, would you recommend to all your patients, even though if they are not a sport player or they are a sport player, to all of them to actually wear an ankle support during the recovering yeah. period? Yeah, you certainly should. they need to wear ankle support for at least six weeks. But at least not six week. too long. Eh? If it's too long, then then it may be like uh, the, someone want to wear for three months, but that's not necessary. Eh? If you want to, after six weeks, if you want to continue the sport, like uh, football and all this, yes, you can wear the ankle brace when you are doing sport. But when you are not doing any sport, you okay. can actually remove it. Because we don't want the anchor to rely on the support. Right, because there are also there are also some patients will ask me whether they can wear the anchor support at night time. So is yeah. it necessary? Yes. Uh, for initial period, we want them to wear twenty four hours, except when you go to take bath. Yeah. Uh, this this to make sure there is proper protect lah. But right. for so this only... ligament tear, usually mm -hmm. we don't use a cement anymore cement is called a plaster of paris because by applying plaster of paris eh, the muscle will get dystrophy very fast this may delay the function on the recovery recovery time yeah right now so we prefer anchor support more than the cement yes. there's yes. also another question from our audience now from uh, shindu uh, she would like to know in which type of patient usually they will have a good or better prognosis yeah so it's depending on the position of the uh, uh, injury during the ankle sprain uh, sometimes they may have fracture uh, if the severe one uh, this is a bone they get fracture uh, they get fracture yeah this one they no choice but to do a surgery if the fracture is displaced this one also may take some time uh, uh, six weeks to two months to recover then for the pure ligament injury, of course, the great one, the uh, mouth stretching on the ligament will be healed better. But the uh, grade three, normally they are, do not so well. However, if there are no other injury, only the pure ligament injury, the recovery time, uh, it should be the same. Six weeks. No, mm, six weeks. Uh, no other injury mean, like what I show you just now, Okay. There are so many things around the ankle. Other injury means some of the ankle sprain may have this tendon tear also. Then the recovery will be longer. Or, so, it's a, oh, so it's a case by case basis? Huh? Yes. Or yeah. when there's an injury like this, it may hit on the cartilage of this bone called a talus. Uh, when there is a cartilage injury, mm -hmm. then the recovery may be longer or even they may need some surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so for a sport player like this young man, how soon can like like uh, if they want to resume back their training, let's say if they have a competition coming up, can they actually resume after six weeks or what is the ideal duration, like ideal time for them to start? Yeah. So for sport men, they are they are the same. Uh, however, if they force to play even after two weeks or the day after is their game, uh, they are so mm -hmm. important until they need to play. They always can wear the other type of uh, uh, ankle brace to protect the ankle when they play. But they need to take a risk uh, or by not injured again. So yeah. if possible, they need to rest. But sometimes, you know, uh, at trick, they, they have no chance to rest. But they need to force to play, then this is the brace they need to wear to, to continue the sport. 
Yeah, Doctor, uh, another question that I really want to ask, like, uh, you know, some people actually when their um, ankle is healing, they might feel a little bit itchy. Can they actually scratch scratch it? Like, um, uh, is it okay you, to scratch? Yeah, you can scratch. If you're not allowed to scratch, you can scratch your hair. <laughs> uh, you can scratch the ankle. Yeah. Just don't, uh, uh, just don't massage it, isn't it? Yeah, usually we are not encouraged uh, massaging because uh, uh, it may get uh, more swollen. Yeah. It may get more swollen. Doctor, uh, what about for case? Uh, doctor, what about for cases like uh, if the swelling is still there after six weeks? Let's say the pain is uh decreasing, but you still like feel the uh, sw the the ankle is still swollen. So yeah. do we need to be it's concerned about good, that? Mm, this is a very good question. Usually, for any foot and ankle injury or foot and ankle surgery. Swelling for three months is very, very common. The oh. longer you put down your foot on the floor, uh, I mean, you don't do the elevation, eh? don't do the elevation, and then you usually put your foot down like this, eh? then the swelling may get longer. But at least three months, swelling is, is very, very common. That's why we are still uh, uh, advise patient to do elevation and also some ice pack when they are get too swollen. Oh, right. So they don't actually have to be too concerned about the swelling because it definitely yes. takes some time for it to disappear. Yes, yeah. unless so, swelling mm -hmm. is associated with severe pain. Unless it is with severe pain. Yeah. Right, Doctor, do you know what kind of foods are actually good for um, tendons and ligament? Oh, any food you can take, but don't take too fat. Oh, because, not fatty uh, <laughs> if you eat too fat and then you cannot do sport and then become very obese then it's not very good <laughs> so in general just any kinds of food that would be fine yeah, yeah i mean you can you can take any like, type of food yeah all oh, right yeah uh at the same time before i forget that uh, i would like to highlight again to our audience uh we will be giving away to three winners a uh, 100 ringgit worth of carrying cash voucher at the end of these sessions. So to everyone who just joined us halfway, don't forget the uh, comments below with your answer. And along with your answer, remember to hashtag carrying pharmacy and hashtag menavimi. At the end of this session, we will announce the winner and we will probably message the winner with the most accurate answer. So you can also like our carrying pharmacy Facebook page, share this video and tag three of your friends to increase your chances of winning. Uh, Dr. Sean, there's actually another question. Um, Will ankle sprain affect uh, pelvic, pelvis pain as well? Yeah, ankle pain normally don't uh, associate with the pelvic pain, but if they got a pain over the pelvis and then refer, meaning that radiation to the ankle, then you may need to uh, look for a spine surgeon to look at the spine. Is there any nerve that impinge at the back of the spine? Yeah. All right, okay. Mm. Um... Let's see if there's any more questions from our audience today. Um, let's see. Doctor, if we actually have to go for a surgery, yes. um, is, it, is it usually only when we have like fractures? Let's say if we have a third grade of like a ligament tear, mm. do, will doctor sometimes advise them to have a surgery? Mm. For the uh, sprained ankle, if there is a fracture, there is displaced, meaning that it, it run away that uh, with the not acceptable position, then our job is to do a surgery to open up and put it back into place and then put some implant to stabilize the fractures. But if just a ligament injury, usually mm -hmm. we will wait for a while. Uh, for me, I will wait for at least uh, two months or six weeks. Uh, if the patient is still complain of pain, then I will do an MRI mm -hmm. uh, instead of X-ray to look at the soft tissue. Is there any other thing like this? How I say tendon or even a cartilage, whether they were injured or not? Then we will uh, uh, try to see whether physiotherapists can help them to decrease their pain. And then by three months, if the pain is still there, then usually. 10% of this patient ankle pain may right. need some surgery. Like now we have a keyhole surgery by putting a small hole in the front and then uh -huh. putting a camera inside into the joint to repair whatever that is necessary. And then uh, we may put a small little hole here to 
to break their ankle uh, ligament so that the, their ankle is stable. Yeah. Oh, to make the ankle stable. Yeah. Uh, speaking about the physiotherapy that doctor you just mentioned yeah. just now, how long should they actually do the physiotherapy? Is it just for like few weeks time or they have to actually constantly doing it? Mm. I will give them a one month chance that usually they will be helpful uh, for them to get back to their uh, uh, food. Yeah? Uh, Fiju is also very important to prevent their recurrent sprain. Eh? Some patients may say, oh, after I got one sprain, why I always sprain my ankle? Yeah, this is because yeah, uh -huh. when you sprain your ankle and then the ligament tear, one of our ligament here, one of the ligament here, it contains a lot of proprioception receptor. Yeah, what is the difficult name? It's like uh, what the thing is? Uh -huh. Meaning, it have a nerve ending, nerve ending that uh, tell us where actually our ankle when you close your eye, right? So you know your position of the ankle. So when this ligament injury then their yeah, nerve and also injured uh -huh. and make you not sure where is the position of ankle so when you walk yeah when you walk sometimes it may just you know regular sprain like this yeah it's very common therefore the physiotherapy will help you to gain back the proprioception receptor you know there are certain exercise like trampoline they will ask you to jump on the trampoline to uh, to uh, 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 train back the, the nerve ending. And then also there's something called wobble board for you to balance on the board so that to do the balancing. And all these are uh, very helpful mm -hmm. for you to gain back the, the sensation and also to train back your muscle to make it strong to prevent mm -hmm. the recurrent sprain. All right. Is, is it does it mean like the sensing of the position? Mm, yes, sensing a position. So doing facial can at the same time, apart from helping with this, they can help with the muscle strength as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think doctor, we talk about uh painkiller just now. Mm. There's a question from our audience here, Norfiza. She asked if she can just take painkiller to ease the pain from a spring ankle. I think the answer should be right, is it doctor? Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, but mm. the pain if the pain is continuous, even after you take some painkiller, then you should seek uh, medical advice. Yeah. Oh, it means that if it's not resolving, even after you mm -hmm. have tried the painkiller, then you yes. might actually want to speak to a doctor to see what is going on with it. Yeah, the, at least like that's how we say the Ottawa rule to go to the clinic or hospital to do uh, uh, x-ray just to see whether any fractures or any other injury because sometimes sprain is not just sprain, eh? it may mm -hmm. be other thing else, you see. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor, what about for, uh, there's a question for, from Catherine Yap. Um, she wants to ask, like, what would be the causes for a sudden ankle pain? Let's say if there's no any sport or exercise uh, carry out, like no involvement of any sport activities, mm. um, what could be the reason? Yeah, it could be uh, many things depending on the age. Uh, like healthy arthritis that we uh, described just now, some arthritis or uh, overuse, or even if say you don't have a fall, but you go to shopping for five, six hours, uh, wearing uh -huh. high heel, they also can get this type of fracture called stress fractures that you are not aware of. Yeah, they, they can be a pain from the nerve, pain from the tendon. So we need to see like, if the pain is not, resolve or continuous, uh, then you need to seek medical advice. If the on and off, only one minute pain, yeah. then it's okay. Huh? But if continuous pain, uh, then we should be concerned about it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, if it's relating to the nerve, will they get the tingling sensation as well? Or is it like just the pain? Mm. If it's a nerve pain, it's like an electric shock. Uh, uh, I think one of lifetime we got some electric shock before. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, it's kind of uh, pain, uh, nerve pain. Yes. Right. Uh, okay, last but not least, is there any tips that Dr. Tra can share with us to prevent an ankle sprain? Yeah, to prevent an ankle pain, sprain, you need to uh, walk properly, look at the step when you are walking. Don't play okay, phone. Before, <laughs> yeah, don't... Uh, 
use a handphone as a GPS. Some people working just like that. Eh? Yeah. And then also uh, do some stretching and do some warm up before you do your sport. Eh? Many sportmen, especially when we go and mm -hmm. rent a, a badminton court, eh? 20, yeah. 30 ringgit per hour. So we want to save the time. We go straight to the court <laughs> without warm up and then just uh, go and play. It's a very dangerous. So you need to do some warm up first before you actually uh, do the game. This applies to all the game that uh, even uh, jogging as well. You need to do some warm up before you start the exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So we should definitely remember to warm up um, mm. anytime before we start doing any kind of exercise or any sport activity. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, well, there's one more question here. I think there's a uh, there's an audience here, she missed out the first part of the session. So she wants to know like, what should we do right after we encounter the anger sprain? So should she immediately wear an anger guard or bandage? Mm. Yeah, that's how we say uh, rice therapy, rest, ice, ice pack, ice compression, 5 to 10 minutes, and then compression. Yes, if you've got an anger brace, you can wear anger brace. If you don't have anger brace, you've got a bandage. You can use a bandage. Yeah, you can use that as well. Elevate, mm -hmm. elevate your elevate. up. Yeah. Yeah, to reduce the swelling. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, that's all for today. And thank you so yeah. much, Dr. Chua and Manarini okay. for these sessions. Uh, let's see. Um, once again, for all the audience, let me highlight again that we are doing a giveaway for uh, three winners, a hundred ringgit worth of the carry cash voucher at the end of these sessions. So to everyone who is watching the live stream right now, uh, please answer the question pinned at the comment box down here. And a lot of your answer, don't forget to hashtag Caring Pharmacy, hashtag Manarini. You can also like our Caring Pharmacy page and share this video out and tag three friends along to increase your chances of winning. So thank you everyone for joining us in this session today. On behalf of Caring Pharmacy, I would like to express our gratitude to Dr. Chua and Manarini for organizing these sessions. So I yeah. think we all have learned a lot from you today. Thank you, <laughs> so, Cindy. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank Kelly. you, Dr. Chua. I hope we'll be able to meet again in the future. So yeah. stay safe, take care, and bye, everyone. Bye, Dr. Chua. Yeah, stay safe. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye.